Hi, everybody. Welcome along to episode 48 of Percussion Discussion. Hope you're enjoying all the interviews. Um, please check out our social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And of course, there is our YouTube channel. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be fabulous. This way you won't miss any of the great uh, episodes that we've got coming up or any that we've already done. And if you would prefer to listen on the go, all our conversations are available in podcast form. You can find those on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. On to today's guest, um, a gentleman who you won't have heard much from as regards to interviews. Um, I don't think he's ever done one, or not for a long time anyway. Um, for a long time, he has been uh, the drummer with Depeche Mode. He's done albums. He's done tours. He's played for lots of other people. He's been a, a recording drummer for, for many years as well. Super talented guy and a really nice guy as well. It gives me huge pleasure to welcome Mr. Christian Eigner. It's a pleasure. It's great to have you. I've been looking online and, and I can't see any content of, uh, you know, with interviews. So I feel really privileged that you've done this. It's really kind of you. It's great. Yeah, no, I think it's, um, you know, there, there's a reason. I, I haven't done many things, to be honest, you know, sure. which is which is a good thing because that means um, I was probably too busy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know? totally. I mean, we're in the, well, ho I say we're in the middle of a pandemic. Hopefully we're at the end of a pandemic Hopefully now. Hopefully we're a bit further than the middle. Yeah. So, if, you know, it's a strange time for everyone involved in music and arts and things. Yes. Have you managed to keep, I mean, I'm looking at your amazing space there. I'm guessing you've kept very busy over yeah, this last year. I was, uh, but there were times I wasn't as busy as I'm, I'm used to, which was a good, which was a good thing because uh, first of all, I had to, I had to change my studio setup a little bit because I mean, suddenly there was no more engineers to work with. <laughs> yeah. Because they were somewhere else. So I had to, I had to basically change stuff so I could record myself again. Sure. Yeah, which that. is, um, yeah, which, which is good. And, and also changed my setups. I built a new drum kit, something that I've never done before, which is like an experimental kit, which is great for, for doing film stuff and, uh, mm. you know, melodic things. Sure. Sure. Work, working. I uh, and, and I, tr I tried to record some, some kind of music that I haven't done before. You know, going back to more drum orientated music now. Mm, mm. No singers, <laughs> lots, of, lots of space. <laughs> Far less egos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it has been fun. And uh, as far as I can see, I mean, it, it's, it's getting more and more busy again. Mm, that's good, that's good. People, people, uh, people want me to play uh, on albums again, you know, sending stuff here, I record here, I send it back. Sure, sure. And uh, there's yeah, also like writing, you know, the, the writing writing thing is always going on. Sure. That's the one good thing. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say it's been a good thing, this pandemic, but it's given people time to do things perhaps that they wouldn't normally have had. Yes, yes absolutely. But to be honest, I'm ready to go on tour again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, you know, it's getting boring now, I have to yeah. say. Yeah, of I'm, course. I'm just, it's great. I mean, I'm I'm privileged. I'm I'm lucky. I've got this, you know. I, I live on the countryside. I'm, um, you know, life has been very good. I'm here with my family. You know, we're we're, we're healthy. We're good. So I can't complain, really. No, that's, there's a lot to say for that. Yes. You know, you, you mentioned recording. Obviously, you've got a, a great space there. Um, yeah. You'd normally have an engineer come over and record. What you you just look after the play inside of it. De depending depending on the, on the project, but. Uh, Let's say if I was if I was tracking drums all day for for an album, it's it's much better to work with an engineer because you can just concentrate on playing and not on who oh, is everything right. You know? Yeah. So so, so so if you had to make it so you've got your um your your computer kind of behind you, so you turn all to your side, so you did. Is that how you? What, that's what everybody says. You know what I do? I push the arrangement back to the right one minute, press <laughs> play. I go in. <laughs> That gives me enough time to tune up, tune the snare a little bit, and then start playing, and that's it. Do you know what? It's you that know, simple. It's it's that simple, but that's all you need, isn't it? You're, exactly. You just need a minute before you start playing, right? Oh, there you go. You you might you might have revolutionized recording in lockdown. <laughs> you know. Well, the, the 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 good thing is when when I started record my my recording. Uh, re recording career when I was when I was probably when I was 16 back then. Uh, 
we still recorded on two tape machines. So I'm probably, you know, I'm I'm still from that generation. Sure. I'm used to go in to, to going into a room and playing a song from beginning to the end. Yeah. W- instead of working eight bars, eight bars loop based or whatever. So sure. I'm still used to that. So so that was pretty handy because if you work without an engineer, you better make sure you play your one take that you don't have to touch after. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's a good way to it's, it's a pain, it's just work. Yeah, of course, of course. Now then, if you don't mind, can we go kind of way back to because I know you started at a very young age. Can we go back to the, your your musical beginnings, if you like, Christian? Sure. Um, well, I, I grew up on you know on the countryside in Austria, not far from where I live now, actually. Sure. And uh, uh, I started. I started. I just saw a drama on TV. I don't remember who it was. It probably was Animal. I think. <laughs> I guess it was him. Uh, and I just wanted to play drums. And I was four years old and I started playing drums and never stopped. Wow. It's as simple that's, as that. That's, 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 that's how simple it is. I also had piano lessons, which yeah. is really good because of, you know, musical understanding and, you know, yeah. learning chords. And, and you, you just learn songs quicker that way. Sure. sure. Uh, but that I gave up after 10 years because it was too boring and I just played drums. Well, I noticed you have lots of vintage keyboards that you showed me around before. So you're obviously still not loads, but but yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I I need that for my production work or for writing or when I when I record. I I, I mainly record analog instruments in here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to stay away from MIDI and and software stuff and as much as I can. Of course. I mean, sometimes you have to use it, but but yeah, I mean, if you if you have an old thing like you know like this, switch it on and it just sounds great. You know, you don't need much. Yeah. Back to the 70s. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Well, same with my my favorite kit that I'm using, you know, concert toms. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Basically, basically, it's a concert tom kit, a PW concert tom kit, which uh, is just amazing. Mm. Yeah. And it's it's a fashionable thing as well at the moment. It's really back in fashion, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think to be honest, I think I was I think I was one of the first guys starting it again, yeah. I guess. Because when I when I, I remember when I had the when I was talking to Garrison about it, uh, I think it did. I think they they haven't they I think they they haven't done many before that, mm. Mm. Which, was, which was a sort of an experiment, but but it really worked. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. What what is it about the concert Tom sound? Is it is it the 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 short decay? What what is it? What is it that draws you to that sound? You you hit it. You play a fill, and you sound like a legend. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why it's good <laughs> with you, you you play something and you think hey i know you know i think i've heard this before you know it's 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 sort of famous <laughs> <laughs> i'm not talking about in the air tonight but well, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh you know that like some things it makes you play a little bit different mm. were you a genesis fan growing up uh, uh well, yes also yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but i mean I, I, before i before i had the the idea of this uh you know trying a concert tom kit i listened to lots of i would say really good old interesting recordings mm. and then i and then i thought hang on what i'm listening to right now that's you know i'm listening to concert toms for mm. sure and if it wasn't concert toms then it, i'm sure that they just took the bottom head off for the yeah. recordings yeah which, which is something they used to do back then absolutely and, and uh i thought you know it would be worth to, to give it a try and they are way more dynamic than i thought they would be Really? Yeah, yeah. And do do you? How does your? How does the sound engineer? I mean, it must be a treat for a sound engineer to make a concert tom up and get a sound on it. Much easier than getting a, a standard tom sound, I'd imagine. I think it's. I think it's much easier hmm. because uh, because it, it's also easier to. I'm usually really careful, especially in my like small tight room in hmm. there. Uh, you know, the less you put in there, the better it sounds. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, sure. Get less ring and. But with concert toms, it doesn't matter how many you put in. Mm, mm. You know, if you can you can put five, four, five, four, five, six toms in. It doesn't really make a big difference because sure. you don't get a lot of a lot of noise that you don't need. And have you got have you got like the full the full range of sizes as well? Have you got everything you could ever want size wise? Uh, yes, I do have everything, but it's not not everything is set up because I'm still. I mean, it sounds a bit funny, but I'm still trying to keep it as small as possible for mm. recording. Yeah, yeah, totally on some. Well, could we can we have a little look at your concert tom kit? Is that all right? Could you take us through? Is that all right? Let's hope we we don't lose the connection. Fingers crossed. We'll go into the (laughs) yeah. Yeah. 
Can you see it? Oh, yes. Look at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> you can see it, right? Yeah, this is oh, my, yeah. my small my small recording room, which is basically... I, I mainly record everything in here because yeah. it's it's a good sounding room. It's... Uh, uh, can you see it? Yes. Yeah, you can. So have yeah. you got some octobounds as well around the side there? Is that? That's uh, rather toms. Ro ah, right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Rather toms on the side, which is pretty interesting. I'm just, you know, experimenting, trying things and, sure. you know, concert toms here. I'm using four over here and double headed floor toms. Yes. Um, yeah. That's such, such an impressive kit. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, it's my, it is my favorite kit. I have to say it's like, wow. you know, it's, I really want to more or less keep it in here for the future and never move it again. It's yeah, like, sure. You know. Amazing. So, yeah. And this is, yeah, I can't go, I will lose connection, but you can see this is the other room, the bigger recording room. Yeah. With two more kids out there. Wow. And the good thing is that everything goes into my, into one session. So when I work on a track, mm -hmm. I can record all, all three drum kits into one song without, really? without changing anything. Wow. So I could I could say okay let's let's do the main track in here and then do some rata toms um, or you know like gong drum overtops in the other room. Wow, that's With, without leaving the session. It's all in one session. <laughs> so that's it. That's pretty good. So I'm assuming you designed your studio yourself, so you could you could have it exactly as you wanted it. I wouldn't say designed it, but I started it, and it's sort of you know it's sort it sort of develops all the time. Hmm. Yeah. And the great thing is, like, if you work in your own space with uh, not changing not changing much, then the sound gets better and better every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Absolutely. because you know the sound I've got going on now is definitely much better than what I had a couple of years ago. Mm. Mm. And it's all it's all stored in there, so you you know switch the whole thing on, and you start playing. You don't do sound checks. You go in it. it it's actually it actually in the end it sounds better than many big, uh, famous studios that I worked in. Yeah, because what's the point? I mean, you go to a famous old studio. You know, some of the desks are a little bit dodgy by now, and then you use a rental kit in a room you don't know with microphones you don't know. So this 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 way of working is actually is actually a bit better. Sure. So you, you know you can come down in the morning, everything's going to be right. You you start work straight away rather than yeah. you know trying to get sounds for two hours or something, whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's the most important thing about my setup here with all the all every every instrument I use basically everything is plugged in and ready to go. Yeah. Because if if it isn't plugged in, you don't use it. Sure. So, so the, the kits that you've got in your studio, are they they stay there. They don't you don't take those out. That's that's purely for recording purposes. Well, it it depends because uh, at the moment, uh, funnily enough, I, I, I had a I was talking to Garrison quite a lot last week, and we we had sort of uh, you know uh, talking about my next kit. Mm. You know, which is going to be super interesting. I mean, it's always so exciting to you know think about a new kit and get it. Sure. Uh, and uh, well, till then, because usually I will definitely. Well, one day I'll be out on the road again with Depeche, I think. Mm, and good. yeah, and, and uh, what I like is I don't really like to get a new kit just before a tour. So it's okay. always nice to have that kit earlier, have it in your studio, and play it for a while, and then take it on the road. Yeah. So you find out any little yeah, or just play it because quirks. Yeah. Exactly. It it gets better. There's nothing worse than just on when you start a tour uh, before rehearsals or during rehearsals, take it out of the boxes and piece it together. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Much much better to have it way earlier. So who influenced you? You know, what drummers were you into as a, as a, as a youngster? When I was the first, my first two favorite drummers were um, Billy Cobham mm -hmm. and Phil Rudd. Well, Phil, I wasn't expecting Phil Rudd. Phil Rudd. Yeah, solid. And I mean, you know, it, they, they, they still, I mean, I still love listening to both of them. Yeah. It's so, it's so good, you know. That, I mean, and, that's quite, that's opposite ends of the spectrum, isn't it? Because you've it's got Phil, totally Phil Rudd, who does exactly. a Phil every six months, and Billy yeah. Cobham, who, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Plays a beat after every, 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 uh, yeah, same. Yeah. You know, Nice. But, uh, that was that was it. And then when I when I got into recording, obviously, uh, 
you know, I mean, and still, you know, I don't think that there there's never been any any better recording drummer than Jeff Bocaro. No, no, I totally agree. So, you know, I think he was just something else. Yeah. You know, so what, the way he he placed things going from A to B, I mean, it's, it's unbeatable you know, mm. still. And yeah. that, I listened to that. I listened to his stuff so many times, and Absolutely. and obviously, all, you know, many other other great drummers. But but actually, the, the the first guys that I was interested in were, funnily enough, really Phil Rudd and, and Billy Collins. Wow! Did you did you see? I mean, did you see ACDC with Phil Rudd? Did yes. you ever see him live? It's of it's just, it's incredible, isn't it? That just he has a he has a feel that's hard to describe. He has he has a swing, not as well. It is yeah, he's a swing. He has a I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he and he smokes two cigarettes during one song. <laughs> I don't know how he does that. No, no. <laughs> that's that's a real talent, that isn't it? But <laughs> so no, you, I, I mean, I, I'm lucky. I've I've interviewed Simon Wright, uh, who took over from Phil Rudd in '84 or what have you, you know, and uh, he he very respectful. Really? In '84, I think it was '84. Was it? Okay, okay. okay. And then he came, he had a, a, another spell with the band, didn't he? Obviously, well, yeah. he's back with the band again now. Um, yeah, now no, I think now, yeah, he's back now, right? Yeah. So, but there are quite a range of drummers there. I mean, and I was going to ask, do you do you read music, Christian? I, I used to. Sure, because you mentioned about all the studio work, and I just uh, I, le no, I learned. I, I was actually I've, I was a good reader, mm. but I don't think I'm I'm anymore because I I I had never had to read. I I didn't I didn't have to I didn't have to read. Mm. Uh, probably for the last twenty-five years. Yeah, it's quite a while. <laughs> that's a, that's a long time, right? Yeah. And right now, I'm I'm so much quicker listening to something and learning yeah. it. Yeah. And to, and to be honest, I always preferred not to read if there was yeah. a chance. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I, but I learned how to do it. Mm. Obviously, yeah. But, it's but a good I, skill to have, isn't it? If you really need it. It it is it is, but um, but it it all it's all about what you train. I think if you if you if you trained in listening and learning, you are you're quick. Yeah, yeah. You know, totally you're cool. nearly nearly as quick as 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 if you if you were reading. Yeah, yeah. Good ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it's always like it's it's it was it it was good to it it was good to know how to read, mm. but it wasn't for some reason it was never important to me. No, no. It's uh... you know, I always I always concentrated a bit more. Uh, I didn't really. You know, it's always same with with let, let's say drum patterns and fills and things like that, or or what, whatever you play. It's not uh, it's not really about what you play. It's about how you play it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the that is something you you can learn up to a certain degree, but um, that's why some people are just better than others. It'll always be the same, won't it? That's for sure. Yes. Okay. I've noticed on 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 some of the the tours you've done your kit varies in size and style quite a lot is that is that a visual thing do, do, i mean do the depeche mode guys insist on that or is it they don't oh nah i mean to be honest the the only the only the only thing that they are thinking of or not even no not even them only you know and anton corbin who's he's the he's doing the 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 stage design so he's the only the only guy worried that that my symbols might cover up too much of his uh, screen <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the only concern. No, I mean nobody talks to me about anything regarding my equipment. Sure, sure. Oh, but no, that's good. No, no, nothing. No, 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 no. Um, we never had this discussion. Sure. To sure. be honest, we we don't even talk about music. To be honest. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Which is a good sign, you know, because if you know you trust you you like you you like what everybody everybody likes what the other guy does, yeah. and you trust you trust each other, and and you don't need need to speak much. It sounds like a happy family. That I wouldn't be there if it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. No, not you... for, not for such a long time, you know. But I was just going to say it's a long time. Ninety seven, six, seven, was it? Well, well, me. I yes. Start, I started in. I started in 90, 1997. Yeah, yeah. That's that is a long time. It's a huge oh, amount. Yeah. Of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely more. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, definitely ninety seven. Yeah. Yeah. And can, can, how did the gig come about for you? I, mean, I, I don't know. There's very little about your um, prior history to Depeche Mode. Yeah, I will, I will, I will. <laughs> I came out of nowhere. 
Well, that's, hey, you got that. That's the good thing about growing up in Austria. You can you can work on yourself, and no one knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you suddenly show up. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so well, nah. I'll ask them. What were you doing prior to yeah. Depeche Mode? What was um, going on at that point? Well, just just to you know, I started playing drums. I I quit school because I wanted to be a mu musician, um, and went to the uh, music conservatory in Vienna uh, for jazz drum, studied jazz drums, but only for a year because when I was 16, I got really busy doing recording sessions already. <laughs> so um, I, I basically spent all my time recording drums. I played terrible productions sometimes, sometimes good productions, but that was still back then, you were, you were still booked to... People needed to book drummers to play on their demos mm. yeah. because you know that that changed a lot, obviously. But uh, which, but that kept kept me really busy. Mm. So and uh, and everything was, you know, you had to be super quick. So I learned how to, you know, I learned to play an uh, one album in a day. That was the that was standard. Yeah, sure. Um, and yeah, and I just spent a few years like that. And then started recording with some of the Austrian stars, yeah. the bigger guys in Austria. Um, and then started to play live with them, some of them, mm -hmm. which was great. And I did that for, for a few years till I was 23, 24, probably. And then I thought, okay, well, you know what? If I stay here, I will do the same thing for the rest of my life. And I'm sort of bored with playing in in playing uh, playing drums with the support band yeah yeah understand um, so what to do so i thought well i have to move to london so i did that and uh yeah it was pretty really funny a friend of mine did it at the same time a bass player uh al and we yeah we just rented a flat in london we didn't know anyone <laughs> you and, had no you had no contacts at all yeah, not no not in the beginning nothing that's kind of and a brave. Then, it's a brave move, isn't it? It was. I have to say. I mean, looking looking at it from now, <laughs> it was. I think it was really brave. Yeah. 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 Because you know, you've uh, gone from having a, a busy. Uh, okay, it might not be. No, but I was. Nah, I, I was busy. I was busy. I was. I, I played with the big guys in Austria, so I was actually. You know, life could have been like this. Yeah. But yeah. I thought, no, this is not really what I want to do. Mm. Um. So yeah, and then I was lucky, met met some really nice, beautiful musicians, started playing with uh you know, started playing with them, and then and then I started started then I started recording uh recording for people in London. Mm. Did the same thing over there. And uh it was really funny because a friend a very good friend of mine, Dave Clayton, uh, amazing keyboard player, he was in the studio with Depeche Mode and uh and I was working with him and, and we, you know, we had a really good working relationship. Mm. And, he, and then, and then I, I think I even stayed at this flat when, when this happened. So, so they, 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 they were just, uh, I think that was a bit of a difficult time because that was just after the, you know, like breakdowns and all, all of that stuff. Sure. They were struggling to finish an album. And, uh, and Dave, the, Dave, the singer, he always wanted to, to, he always, always wanted to have a drummer mm. and he said okay I'm going back to do this but I want a drummer and then they asked Dave Clayton if he knew a drummer and Dave Clayton said yeah absolutely I know the right guy you know <laughs> he, he, he's you know I, I see him every day because he actually lives in my basement right now <laughs> <laughs> it was a, sort of that and, and that was it we just met up and we played a few songs together and that was it wow so yeah. kind of right place right time uh, right place, right time, but uh, also you know, right, right things. Probably, probably right things that I was concentrating on before. Yeah. I mean, I was because I was playing. You know, I, I started playing to click tracks when I was, you know, a small kid. Sure. Which is something you need. You need. You really need to. To you. You need to know how to do this mm. when you play with the pen. Sure. Oh yeah. That's well, I can. I can imagine. Yeah. It's uh... so. And I also, and the funny thing is, I always, exp I always uh, wanted to, you know, tune drums a bit differently. And I had this in Austria, and I'm, I was, I was only using, in, you know, like, like talking about pre previous setups, 
when you, you probably saw like two like two bass drum yes. setups, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it actually isn't. It actually it's never been a two bass drum setup. It was the right bass drum is the main bass drum. Sure, right. Double pedal on to the right bass drum. Mm -hmm. The left bass drum empty and tuned up as much as you you can go. Okay. So it goes like bing, and then you send it through distortion, compression, whatever. Right. So basically, two, two bass drum sounds. So, and I, I, I came up with this in Austria, and you know, played this album, and, and I hit this bass drum a few times, and they were like, "What is wrong with you? <laughs> what, what? What's the? What's this? I mean, this this it sounds broken. It sounds you know, you can't use this." <laughs> or like a little little eight inch tom that I tuned cranked up as much as I could. Bang! Hey, come on, you, you can't you can't do this, you know. So that's what the guys in Austria said to me. Started playing with Depeche, and I I, I listened to the drum machine because it was all drum machines that I was listening to. Obviously, I was like, oh hey, you know this track. There's two there's two different bass drum sounds. Oh, that's cool. So I've got two different bass drum sounds, and suddenly everything that you know all the things that nobody wanted me to do in austria suddenly made sense yeah. when i played with the fish mode wow and, and that you know that's that's sort of that's uh yeah i don't know what it is but it's, it's definitely lucky for sure it's definitely the right gig for you then isn't it if you, oh, totally. kind of, you go hand in hand don't you totally well the and the, the other beautiful thing about this is that uh you know there wasn't there was no drumming parts that i had to learn because there weren't any no. So actually, and that's the reason I still, I can still go on and, and play this like, um, you know, like like I did twenty years ago because because it's all I came up with this. Yeah, sure. I didn't have to copy, I didn't have to do this or that. I mean, I changed my my approach a little bit because when I started, I really tried to play like a machine. Mm. Yeah. And now I don't I don't see it like that anymore. I play around I play around the machine. Yeah, were you were you um, given a lot of freedom when you know when you first started no, with the band? No, no, nobody, nobody ever said anything to me. Really? No. So no direction is in. Oh, can you keep it more? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Maybe it's like, oh, could you please do me a favor and hit hit a symbol so I know that uh, we we you know that I know that the next part's coming up for the four bars le four bars after that. Mm -hmm. So helping. Yeah, but a free reign as 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 what you played and and fills and things. There was no yeah, no problems. With still, well, no, nothing. Because uh, look, what I what I think is important, I actually put into my my playing anyway. Mm. And if there's something I think, well, it's not really important. There's a few, you know, even when we're touring, there's a few mo moments where, to be honest, I don't even know what I play because I change it. Really? Yeah. So you, you're enjoying yourself up there. I mean, that much is obvious. Totally. From, you know, why, why <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> well, 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 I think, I think that is the, come on, that, that's what it's about. It's, it, yeah. you know, you, 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 you want to have a good time. And, and uh, I mean, we, we're, we're, we're lucky to do something like this yeah. because, because, uh, you know, people, lots of, lots of people, a lot of people are go returning home after, after seeing a show and they're, they're happy. Yeah course yeah so i mean couldn't be and, better and I've, I've been listening to two of the live albums obviously live in berlin which is an older one uh -huh. and the, the, i've noticed your kit sounds on the, on the more recent live spirits album is is definitely more acoustic sounding totally uh it's yeah. it's, a, it's an incredible drum sound in fact on that is that something that's that, a blue kit by the way is that's that is that, that one right that's one. yeah it's that one okay yeah um, do, do you think it's 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 changed over the over the years? For uh, has, it, has it ever been a hybrid thing you've done, or was it always been totally acoustic? Um, um, to be honest, I started I started uh, totally acoustic, mm -hmm. but we we always we always uh, we always did a bit of processing. Yeah, and then we did one tour where we, for example, we did a lot of processing, which means uh, different effects on different drums. Mm. But all, all, uh, all processing the acoustic sound. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then, and then uh, on the on on a bit later, I I just introduced. Uh, I think I got two, I had two triggers that I used for intros. Yeah. For example, right, or a bass drum trigger for you know even getting a third bass drum sound in. Yeah, yeah sure. Something like that. And on the last tour, we only used uh, triggers on my 
second snare drum, which is basically which is basically I call it the eighties snare because it's uh, tuned down as low as you can. Yeah, a blat. <laughs> lots, lots of tape on it, and yeah. it just goes. Poof. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Which you know, it's a great sound. And and to use a trigger on there to add something on top mm. and blend it in is a really good thing. Sure, sure. But I've I've noticed that it's definitely a more organic drum sound on the live spirits album it's i mean the whole album it's just it's just so energetic isn't it the whole thing has a real energy I would, to I would it say the whole i would say the whole thing is a bit more organic now than it used to be yeah right? yeah, yeah it's a sort of yeah. yeah i mean i i mean no disrespect by this to to anybody in the band but i would much rather hear depeche mode live than 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 on on cd or vinyl and and i don't you know it has a different energy about any band has a different energy live but depeche mode is just it's like a real sort of punch in the stomach isn't it when it you know it's uh yeah well yeah exactly well at, at this at this stage we say goodbye to all the viewers from germany who are dressed in black <laughs> <laughs> hey you know <laughs> i'm only being honest <laughs> it's it's funny because there is still <laughs> there is still this guy you know when when uh you know on on uh i'm trying to stay away from this but sometimes i i, I had i had a view and you know when you look at forums mm -hmm. there's still like like depeche mode fans of course like like old school fans and they they probably hate me you know because well because i'm there because it's not like what it used to be but it, it's 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 sort of weird because i've been there for longer than the band has been around without me before yeah yeah sure and uh but you know i mean sh sure there is people i think people some people want to hear the the drum machine the 80s thing and and they want to get the old setup back with only just keyboards and you know but on the other hand i mean you know it, it works a bit better in a stadium when you play like this i would say it's the it's but it's it's the energy, the power, the visuals, everything. It's just got a different exactly. energy. Totally. Exactly. The, songs no, are, I, the songs are the songs, and they always will be, won't they? Exactly, exactly. And there is always a big difference between between the the album arrangement, especially the new albums. Hmm. You know, the album arrangements and what we what we change when we when we when we play play live, hmm. yeah. which is a good thing. You know, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone else does it. What well, you know. Um, yeah um so it, but the, the, i mean the live spirits album has been playing for probably three weeks in my car now and it's uh not unfortunately right. my, my 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 sub speakers in the car don't handle it very well so it, has, <laughs> it works much better on headphones but it, the, the energy is 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 phenomenal it really cool. is and the, and the drums just sound beautiful it all blends oh, right. uh, uh, i mean that was there was a uh really good tour i mean it was i think yeah. it, the whole thing it was a it was a big tour it was long you know yeah and i think 18 18 months or something oh, well wow, that is a huge tour well, include, include including rehearsals and everything and promotion yeah. but but yeah no it was it was it was it was big mm. and is nice. it is it um i mean you've mentioned before it's like a happy family is it is it great fun touring with depeche is it is it like totally yeah totally no it really is a, it's a great family yeah sure sure because it's it's a long time, isn't it? I'm trying to I'm trying to work out how many is that 20, uh, 21, 25 years, is it? Or something, 24 years? Must be, yeah. It's a long time in you know in any band. And do you do you get involved uh with any writing at all? Obviously, I appreciate the the you know, you probably I guess you don't play much on the albums. Do you I I play on I play some sometimes I do play on the albums. Hmm. Hmm. It depends on on you know the style and whatever. Sure. But there has been there has been albums I I played I played drums on some albums yeah sure and uh, but also in I think in two thousand and six I started to write uh, songs with Dave yes yes and yeah we we still write you know we're still writing and and uh, and we always we always have you know at least a couple of tracks on the album yeah yeah oh that's good and yeah which is which is which is fine and. To be honest, it's it's all that writing thing is all about uh, you know where we're going song wise. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not really thinking about production because as soon as a producer comes in and you know it's it's that that's a completely different story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is interesting because it's a different you know it's it's nearly like a different world to the live thing. Mm -hmm. But it's both good, you know. 
well they've got it they've got to coexist together haven't they it's uh it's just, yeah. that's the way it works isn't it yeah and, but I mean, we've been playing together for such a long time that as you know as soon as we get together for rehearsals it's like we sort of start where we where we were last time we yeah you just we take played. off yeah 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 exactly exactly and it's a lot of fun yeah and have you had to um have you had to cancel many dates with, with covid and things oh no 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 the last two have finished in 18 oh okay so you got you had nothing planned in the immediate we were we were lucky that we we were not supposed on tour last year yeah oh that's good yeah and i actually i think you know well let, let's 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 see but so far we there was no cancellations nothing so that right. was cool. yeah it's nice to hear that because so many people have lost so many tours and or rescheduled them two or three times and had to put I mean, them back. we could be we could be we could be on the road like this year or next year yeah. but because of this it's gonna you know it's gonna gonna delay a bit and yeah of course let's see, let's see i mean it's not you know <laughs> we definitely couldn't couldn't be on the road in six months from now you know yeah, yeah. that is still not an option yeah but i will um i will use this and play some solo shows in 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 september october which is good. oh really yep fantastic yeah. yeah i was actually yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna play some in austria i wanted to do this last year but then we had to cancel mm. then we wanted to do it in april oh it's it's basically clubs you know i'm gonna play two backing tracks and play by my you know on by myself and just play some music that sounds amazing in clubs and actually i was talking to someone today to maybe maybe we can get some uk dates together in, wow. in maybe in October or something. So we, we're, we're talking about that right there. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be fun because, you know, I mean, till, till it's possible to, to do bigger things again, mm. I think this will be the first, the first option to do. Yeah. Yeah. Just play clubs. Hey, at least it's, you're out playing and, and, you know, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, as much as I love creating things in here, uh, it is time to, to, <laughs> you know, to go somewhere and play. Do you like, do you, would you say it's kind of a 50-50 thing between playing and studio? Are you, are you happy doing either or both? You know, do you like a happy medium between them? Um, sometimes, sometimes I'm spending too much time doing studio work. Yeah. So let's put it that way. If you, if, if you, if you, if you would come in and say, okay, I'm going to take away your studio. I'll, I'm gonna say, okay, that's not nice of you. If you come here and take away, take to take away my drum kit, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, so I will. That is always. That's always gonna be my main thing. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I, I can live w without studio work, but I can't live without. I think I get you know a bit mad when I don't play drums for a while. Do you do you play every day? Would you just get on the kit and just just have fun? Not every, not every day, but uh, but I, I, actually at the moment I play I play quite a lot at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I mean uh, playing as I, I mean I don't mean as in recording tracks for people or doing. No, 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 I know what you mean. No, just no, sit no. and enjoy. Sh exactly. Shed. <laughs> just, yeah. Exactly. Just just go in and play. Yeah. 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 Great. The trick, the trick is uh, the trick is you know switch off all the electricity in here. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's a trick, and then you then you just go and play. You don't even think about recording. Sure, sure. Well, look, can we talk about Compact Space, another project that you... I know it that was... Does, it, that doesn't exist anymore, by the but, way. No, but it was, it was, it was, it was something. And, and I've been having a listen to... to, to, to um, oh, God. Nameless, wasn't it, the album? Yeah, Some yeah, cool yeah. stuff on that. Some, you, really? You know that? Yeah, th there's a track, and it reminds oh. me of Pink Floyd. Oh, Unstoppable Collision. And ah, I, I, I don't know why it's got a Pink Floyd esque thing going on, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's a great really album. Nice, nice guitars, but Martin played some of the guitars, by the way. Really? Ah, okay. On 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 on, on this on this track, yeah, yeah. It's it was a, it, so that doesn't exist anymore. No, it doesn't. It, it, to be honest, it never did. Right. It never did. It was a studio project <laughs> because we just I started writing with a friend of mine, and we thought, well, this is this is actually cool. We should, you know. Let's 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 uh, let's try and get get a, get an album together. Mm, yeah, but it it is you know it it is a pain to start a new project. Mm, yeah, I suppose it really, it's... I have to say. Um, but it's it it was it was good. It was a lot of fun, and you know, obviously, a lot of experience and learning because I did all the production production myself, all yeah. the keyboards, everything. I actually played everything myself. Yes, because I don't. I, as far as I'm aware, there's no drums 
on any of the tracks, is on there? Some, on some, but not not many, not no, many. Not obviously, yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Maybe some hidden, you know, room room mic tracks that I added or something like that. Yeah, sure. So, do you like with, with the studio? Do you like to experiment with with sort of you know yeah. sure. interesting mic placements and things and just absolutely. Oh, not 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 the mic placements, but uh, with let's say if you put enough mics up. Yeah. Then you know, get rid of two, use the other two, use this, use that for different songs. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, you can't see it from here, but I mean, because that's that's another good thing about the pandemic is is uh, I got rid of the of this of the door yeah. to, to the recording room because there's no engineer sitting here. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, you yeah. don't need the door. The good yeah. thing is you can put a uh, there's a shower in there over there. I put a room mic into the shower. <laughs> Which is an amazing effect, you know. You know, it's like it's like a, it's a beautiful room sound. Yeah, sure, sure. And you can add, yeah. See, I wouldn't have that without without this situation. Without COVID, ah, uh, tell you what. So ne- next next engineers coming in, they all have to wear headphones sitting in. Yeah, it's not the same, is it? Well, <laughs> look, Christian, this has been an absolute pleasure, and I, I, I it's been honestly, it's been so, so really fantastic nice to talk to you. Well, likewise, it has, you know, as I say, um, we, we, we don't hear anywhere enough from you. So it's, um, you know, I was, maybe I, m- I might change this, you know, at, at least I'll, I might, re- I might relaunch my website or something like that. Yeah. So, people, yeah. people like to know about stuff. We're, we're kind of nosy and dr- drummers in particular, you know, it's like a big family, isn't it? We all like to. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is, yeah, and that that's a great thing because I, I I love you know watching good drummers, listening to drummers. I mean, you can. There's so much to learn. Absolutely, that's the greatest thing about drumming is you, you know it never it never ends. No, absolutely not. It's... Yeah, and that's yeah. How, I mean, how how nice is that? It doesn't get any better, I don't think. You, ne- you never get bored. <laughs> no, no, you don't. You don't. You really don't. Well, look, Christian, um, I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. And uh, thanks for, Thank for doing this. And thanks for showing us around your incredible space there. So, yeah, um, Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Well, let's hope we get to see you over in, in the UK doing your, your thing, you know, your show with the tracks, because I think that, that, would be, that would be... That would be cool. I'll, I'll keep you posted about that. Please do, yeah. I think that's well, something I'd be really interested in. So, um, Yeah, could be, could be interesting. Great. Yeah. Well, look, thanks once again. And um, I will see you next time. Take care. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot.